Do you have overbite? What is it? And how do you fix it? Time for some PFO phone so you know where you're going. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Ryan Packard. Good to see you. Actually, I can't see you. It's good to be with you watching me. In today's episode, we're going to address an orthodontic issue that is commonly misnamed overbite. We're gonna talk about what it is and how you can fix it. Don't forget, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Or if you have questions about what we talk about or other orthodontic related things, leave a comment down below. And of, co of course, consider subscribing to our channel so that I can open your eyes to the wonders of straight teeth and beautiful bites. So overbite, when we talk about overbite, you can see in this image, most people refer to overbite as the top teeth being in front of the bottom teeth. That's what most people refer to when they say, oh, I have overbite. Okay, they're talking about, more than likely, the fact that their top teeth sit in front of their bottom teeth. As you can see in this video, see how this patient's teeth on top are considerably in front of the bottom teeth. Here's another visual. In orthodontics, this is what we try to achieve. Everything fits together. A lot of people present with different overbite. Okay, again, this is what they're referring to when people say that, where their top teeth come in front of their bottom teeth like this. That's what people call overbite, okay? And there's different degrees of that. First thing that I wanna say about this overbite, it's actually not called overbite. It's called overjet. In the orthodontic profession, we refer to the top teeth being in front of the bottom teeth, like I'm doing a little dance move here. Anyway, back to teeth. We refer to that, the top teeth being in front of the bottom teeth in any variation of this from here to here, even back to here, okay? We call it overjet. When the top teeth are in front of the bottom teeth, it's called positive overjet. When the top teeth are behind the bottom teeth, and we're not gonna talk about that today too much, it's called negative overjet. In orthodontics, we try to shoot for something that's like this, where the top teeth just barely rest on the outside of the bottom teeth. In the orthodontic profession, the term overbite actually refers to the depth of somebody's bite. That means how much the top teeth come down past the bottom teeth. Some people, you can't even see their bottom teeth because their top teeth cover their bottom teeth so much. That usually means they have a deep overbite. But again, overjet, which is commonly referred to as overbite by most people, is actually what people are talking about when they say, hey, my front teeth stick out way too far in front of, I mean, that's really far. Usually it's something like this. So we're talking about overjet. All right, so should you have overjet? The answer is yes. Everybody, we hope, has about one to two, maybe one to three millimeters of overjet. And orthodontists kind of view it a little differently or measure it differently. But in essence, however they put the numbers, you want your top teeth here, you want your bottom teeth to touch right behind your top teeth or barely be out of contact or not quite touching right there in the front, but they're very close. That's what the ideal overjet is. And you may have it. A lot of people do. Don't worry, it's not the end of the world. I don't think you're gonna die. Actually, I know you're not gonna die. At least, not from the overjet. Not to be like dark and gruesome. That's what overjet is. How do you fix overjet? Well, the first step you need to make is go see your orthodontist and ask them specifically what will be best for you. But there's a couple different ways that you can fix overjet. Now, one of the most common ways that orthodontists will attempt to improve or reduce, make your overjet smaller. We want small overjet, small positive overjet. We don't want large overjet, small, not large. Small. One way is by using rubber bands, okay? These elastic, right? They kind of look like hair ties. Most of them are this clear color. There are some that are latex free. You use rubber bands for a lot of different things, including fixing your overjet, what people call overbite. These little puppies are compliance driven. That means that you have to wear them. If you don't wear them, then your overbite or your overjet is not gonna get fixed. How do you wear them? Well, there's different ways that you can wear them. The most traditional approach is when you have braces, these happen to be clear braces, so you might not be able to see them, but metal or clear, usually these braces have have hooks on them, hooks on the top. Sometimes you don't like them because they're pokey. Anyways, you take your rubber band and you put it over the top of, like if you have a hook there, and you get it all the way down, okay? You hook it all the way down to this bottom one. So, there it is. See how it reaches in the back? It reaches from the front to the back. 
the, or the top in the front to the bottom in the back, okay? And you probably hook that on both sides, okay? So you'd get two rubber bands. These rubber bands come in different sizes. Depending on the significance of your overjet, you might have to wear them for like 20 plus hours a day for several days, weeks, months, maybe even years. And it's compliance driven, like I said. So if you take this off and you just have braces on, well, your overjet probably not gonna fix all the way. You have to be good at wearing rubber bands. And when I mean good, I mean you have to be compliant. You have to do it. If you don't do it all the way, you might end up with a little bit of extra overjet, like I said, right? Maybe a little more than you want. Rubber bands, one way to fix overjet. And in case you were wondering, there's different appliances right? There's one appliance called the motion device or the carrier. And this is like a bar that gets glued onto your teeth and you hook the rubber band onto the bar like so. And then usually you hook it down to like a metal piece down on the bottom. Same concept. So you're not using it with the braces. It's a different approach, but still using rubber bands. So you have to be compliant. Finally, if you're wondering, can you use rubber bands with Invisalign? The answer is yes. Invisalign has plastic and what the orthodontist can do is they can program the plastic to have sections that aren't there. So you can add those little metal pieces on the bottom teeth, right? That the plastic can go around and then you can hook the rubber bands onto, voila. Or sometimes orthodontists will even just stick the rubber band like straight into the plastic. You'd have these little cutouts on the plastic. So rubber bands can be used in lots of different ways. And like I said, there's different kinds of rubber bands, different sizes, strengths. Your orthodontist will know what you need. But the biggest, most important thing about the success with rubber bands is you. If you don't wear the rubber bands, it's not gonna work. And I'm talking about wearing them faithfully all the time. You can tell you how to eat, but the more you wear them, better it works. Let's say you have a massive overjet or you just like, you know what? I don't wanna deal with the rubber bands. I don't wanna have to remember to wear them. Well, in my office and in many orthodontic offices throughout the world, we use an appliance called the Herbst. This appliance has been proven to do amazing things to reduce your overbite or what we call overjet, okay? The reason why it's so successful is because it's got multiple components and it gets glued, it gets glued in. It gets glued in your mouth. So you as the patient don't have to worry about taking it in and out like rubber bands. So if you're not good at remembering or if you just find that life's too busy, if you have this glued in, then it's constantly pushing your mouth or your lower jaw forward to reduce the overjet. And what this can do is two things. It can move the teeth. It can also help modify your growth. If you haven't hit your growth spurt yet, this could be a great predictable option, very predictable. There's other appliances like that called the Mara. There may be other similar appliances that get glued in or get tied onto the wires of your braces. All those things are geared to help make your overjet smaller. There are two other common approaches to reducing the overbite or overjet. And depending on how bad it is, some people, their bones, their lower jaw just doesn't grow very far forward. You can see in this special x-ray that we took, the top jaw is here and the bottom jaw is down here. You can see that it's back. In individuals who are already adults, have already gone through their growth spurts, all right, and their bones are like that, two approaches are common. One, you can take out teeth on top. We're talking about taking out first premolars, both sides on top. And then what you do with all that, all that space that you just created by taking out the teeth, you pull back the front teeth to get rid of the overjet or overbite. Not always the most cosmetic option, but very viable. That's why you need to talk to your orthodontist to see if that's good for you. And the final approach, and this is probably the least common approach, but depending on how bad it is and how the cosmetics of your profile look, individuals that have chins or lower jaws that are really far back and don't have a lot of contour in their neck, or if they have sleep apnea, there are lots of different reasons that could contribute to the decision, hey, you know what? The best option to get a lower jaw forward to help fix the overjet is through surgery. The only way that you know that is by visiting with your orthodontist and perhaps a local surgeon who can coordinate together to decide if that is the best option for you. Most people go through the rubber bands or some sort of glued in appliance that helps push the jaw forward to help correct the overjet. But on occasions, there are those who benefit from either taking out teeth on top or surgery. So now you know, first, what most people call overbite is actually overjet. We want positive overjet. That means the top teeth should be in front of the bottom teeth, just not too much. If you have large overjet, there are ways that you can address this. Rubber bands, glued in appliances, taking out teeth, surgery, those are all different options. And the best way for you to figure out what's good for you is to go see your local orthodontist. If you have questions, 
leave a comment below. There's so much more to show. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and consider subscribing to the channel so that I can open your eyes to the wonders of straight teeth and beautiful bites. That's all I've got. Just a little PFOing so you know where you're going. Pack it out.